and welcome to or back to my channel my name is Gabrielle and today I have a special tutorial for you guys over the hanging plant purse which was a requested video from my last video where I just made one and I didn't really say how I was doing it I was just having fun trying to construct one and now I have the tutorial here for you guys and I'm super excited so make sure to let me know any questions you have in the comments and I will try my best to respond as fast as I can there is a written pattern for this tutorial in the comments down below and without further waiting let's get into the tutorial For this tutorial, you're going to need a 4.5mm crochet hook, a yarn needle, a pair of scissors, and then the color of yarn that you want to use for the pot. This yarn is a size 4 and medium weight. And then I'm using two different shades of green. You can use one shade if you want, and I'm going to be using the string of pearls type plant, but there's plenty of other tutorials that will go over other types of plant leaves that you could add to your purse. You will also need a shade of brown yarn for the soil. And optional, but is definitely helpful, is some sort of cardboard as well as a hole puncher to add some structure to your purse. We're going to start by making a magic circle and to make a magic circle you're going to make a cross so wrap the yarn around your fingers and make a cross and then I use my back finger here to hold it and then with my crochet hook I go underneath that first strand above the cross and then just pull that back strand under and just kind of move your hands up like this. Then you're going to want to make sure that you're holding this back string and this front string with your left hand while pinching up here so you don't undo everything. So just hold these two strands with your hand like this and chain one to secure everything. So now you have your little magic circle. Um, if that was too fast, you can find another tutorial on YouTube for how to get a magic circle and then come back to this video. Or you can also make a slip knot and then chain four and then make a slip stitch into that first chain that you made and then just use that and go into your chains in the, in the middle of the chains. And that's a like a more easier way to make a magic circle. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make eight single crochets into this magic circle. So we're just going to stick our hook in through this loop like this. And then yarn over. Pull your yarn through. You'll have two loops on your hook, so yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And that's one single crochet. Go in again. Yarn over. Yarn over. Pull through both loops. And that's two. Continue until you have eight single crochet in your magic circle. Then go ahead and pull that strand to close your circle. Now we're going to go into that first stitch and all the stitches around actually and put two single crochets into each stitch. To find the first stitch you can either look over here and find it or if it looks a bit confusing, you can count back eight from the hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Insert your hook into that first stitch like so. Then make two single crochets into that same stitch. So there's one, and then here's another one. It might be helpful at this point to add a stitch marker or a safety pin or an earring of some sort into that first stitch of this row, but you should just have 16 stitches at the end, so I'm just going to continue. Three, go back into that same one, four, now two in the next one, five, six, next one, seven, into that same spot, eight, next one, nine, into that same spot, ten, eleven, into that same spot, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, into the last one, fifteen, sixteen. 
Now I'm sure you can see how it can get a bit confusing as to where the start one is, so I recommend putting in a stitch marker into that last stitch in case you're not sure. For the next row, we're gonna put one single crochet into the next stitch, and then in the stitch after that, we're gonna put two. So one, and then go into that same spot, two. And that's the pattern for this row. So the next one is just one stitch, and now we're going to put two into the next one. Continue this all the way around and I'll meet you guys back. All right, so now I have 24 stitches and for the next row, we're going to do two single crochets and then a single crochet increase. So in the first stitch, one single crochet and the next stitch, one single crochet and in that third stitch, two single crochets. And that's the pattern all the way around. One, two, three, four into the stitch. One single crochet in the next stitch, one single crochet in the next stitch, two single crochets in that third stitch. Repeat that all the way around and I'll meet you guys back. For the next row, we're going to do three single crochets and then an increase in the fourth stitch. So the first stitch, one single crochet. The second stitch, one single crochet. The third stitch, one single crochet. And at fourth stitch, that's when we're doing our increase. One, two. Our last row had 32 stitches, so this row we should add eight and we should have 40 stitches when we get all the way around. So you guys repeat that pattern all the way around and I'll meet you guys when I'm back and you should have 40 stitches. All right, for the next row, we're gonna do four single crochets and then in the fifth stitch, we're gonna increase. So one, two, three, four, and now in that fifth stitch, we're gonna increase. Continue this all the way around. You should have 48 stitches when you get back to your stitch marker. For the next row, we're gonna do five single crochets and then an increase. So, one single crochet in the first five stitches. And then you're going to put six and seven into the next stitch. Six, in the same stitch, seven. And repeat that all the way around. And the last row we had 48 stitches, and this row we should have 56. And I'll meet you guys when you're all the way back to the stitch marker. For the next row, we're going to put one single crochet into the first six stitches, and then increase in the seventh stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then you can increase now, seven, and then put the eighth one in that same stitch. Repeat this all the way around and you should have 64 stitches. I'll meet you guys back at the stitch marker. All right, so I think that this is a big enough base for my pot. You can do more or less rows than this depending on the size that you want your bag to be. The bag that I made in my last video is a bit smaller, but I think I want this one to be able to fit my phone or something that's a bit more practical as I couldn't really put too many things in the last bag. Um, so you, if you wanted to add more rows to this, the next one you would do seven single crochets and you would increase in the eighth and follow the same pattern we've been following to figure out the next size. So we did no single crochets, then one single crochet and an increase, two single crochets and increase, three single crochets and increase, four, five, six, seven, so the next one would be eight single crochets and an increase, then nine, then ten, etc. And then when you're ready with the size of the pot that you like, we're going to start building it up. So in order to do that, we're going to make one single crochet into these front loops only. So each stitch has two loops. 
and usually when we crochet we go underneath both of them so like this you can see we have two loops on the top however for this row we're just going to be going under that front loop so just like this and that back loop is behind over here and we're just going to put one single crochet into each stitch only in that front loop it might be tricky to get your hook into the front loop. What I do is I just lay my hook really slide it up flat against my work rather than try to go in like this. So I put it like at this angle and then that makes it easier for it to go right underneath. So just like this. Continue that all the way around and I'll meet you guys back at the stitch marker. Alright, so this is what my work looks like right now. As you can see, with the front loops only, I added it to curl up. What we're going to end up doing is having it so that it curls up this way over time. And that will happen as we add more and more rows onto our work. Um, just because right now, this is the side that looks really good. So we want that to be actually on the outside of our pot, not on like the inside of the bag. So for the next two rows, we're just going to put one single crochet into each stitch. And then I'll meet you guys back. Just one single crochet, both loops only, all the way around. Alright, so this is what it looks like after I actually did nine extra rows of just single crochet in each stitch, both loops, and including the front loop only, then it's ten. For the tenth row, we are going to actually do a row of increase. This is going to make our pot go out a little bit as it extends upward. As you'll remember our last row of increase inside was six single crochets and then an increase in the seventh stitch. So now we're going to do seven single crochets and an increase in the eighth stitch. So in the first seven stitches just put one single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and now into that eighth stitch, we're putting two single crochets. One, two. Continue this all the way around, and I'll meet you guys when you get back to the stitch marker. All right, this is what your pot should look like so far, and you should have a total of 72 stitches all the way around. Now let's continue with single crochets into each stitch all the way around for nine more rows. And then I'll meet you guys back at the stitch marker after nine rows of just one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Alright, so this is what my pot is looking like so far. It's getting to about the size that I want, but for this last row, I'm just going to finish it off with some increases. One single crochet in the first eight stitches. Three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, and then in the ninth stitch we're going to put two single crochets, nine and ten, and repeat that pattern all the way around until you get back to the stitch marker and I'll show you what to do next. So once you've made it all the way back to your safety pin, we're just going to fasten off the yarn and we're going to do this by making a slip stitch into the next stitch. So to do that you insert your hook into the next stitch yarn over and pull through the stitch and then just pull through the stitch on your hook. Then you can just chain one and pull it up a little bit and then cut it. And there's the pot. You can add more or less rows depending on how tall you want the pot to be. Um, this is working for me. And then the last step we're going to do in, the, in a little bit later is add some cardboard inside to make sure that it's standing up nice and not floppily. So get the color you want to use for the soil and then make a magic circle. To make a magic circle, wrap around your fingers, create an X like last time, hold the string, then go under the first strand and pull the second strand through and just turn your hands, pinch up here, and then you're going to hold the two ends of the yarn so it doesn't unravel and chain one to secure it. Should have this. Then go ahead and put eight single crochets into the magic circle. Pull 
Hold the end to close it and make a full circle. Then count eight back to get to the first stitch and insert your hook into the first stitch. We're gonna put two single crochets into each stitch all the way around and you should have 16 stitches. Alright, so I'm adding a stitch marker into my 16th single crochet because as we get more stitches, again, it's going to get more difficult to continue counting along with the pattern of increases that we're using. So we're kind of going to continue how we would made the bottom of the pot for the soil, but we're going to go all the way up until the round where we single crochet 8 times and increase into the ninth stitch. So we're going to continue the pattern of no increases then one single crochet and an increase, two single crochets and an increase, three single crochets and an increase, four single crochets and an increase, five single, cro five single crochets and an increase, all the way up until you have eight single crochets until an increase. And if you are confused about that, you can go back and watch the part for that we made for the bottom of the pot, but I'll meet you guys back when your soil has reached that round. All right, so this is what my soil is looking like so far. If you made more rows of increases for your pot bottom to make it bigger or less to make it smaller, just make sure that the number of stitches you have is equal to the number of stitches around the top of your pot. And because this looks like it has different corners, I'm just gonna do one row of single crochets all the way around to even out the edges and make it look more like a circle. And also because when I put the soil into the pot, it still is like not fitting. So I think one more row will make it fit. So for this last row, put my stitch marker back. We're just going to put one single crochet into each stitch all the way around like this. And I'll meet you back at the stitch marker to fasten it off. Alright, so this is what my soil looks like now after one round, and you can see it's a lot more circular. And if I put it inside of the pot, it is the perfect size to fit all the way around in it. So to fasten off, again, we're just going to put one slip stitch into the next stitch. So into your hook, you're going to pull through, and also through the loop on your hook. And then chain one and pull it up, and then just cut inside the loop. And of course, pull tight. Here you can see that I took one piece of cardboard and I drew two circles on it. One circle is the same size as the bottom of my pot and the other is the same size as around my soil. And the soil one, I drew a dotted line down the center which I ended up scoring with my scissors. And I cut these circles out and I put the cardboard one that's for the base of the pot inside the pot. And then for the soil one, I ended up hole punching all the way around. Alright, so to attach the soil to your cardboard piece, I just did some hole punches all the way around the circle so that I can bring the yarn up through and down through. And my first video that I made, I just used a sewing needle and just stabbed through it, but it ended up hurting my thumbs trying to press the needle through the cardboard. So for this time, I came up with this. I was also thinking of using some hot glue and just gluing it down. So feel free to get creative with this part and figure out how you want to attach it. Then just cut off um, a little bit of yarn, enough that can go around your circle. And then some. Thread your needle. And I'm just going to start by going up through anywhere really. Now with my spacing of the holes in the back, I'm not going to be able to go up and down through every single stitch here. I'm just laying my cardboard underneath and going through whatever one is naturally above the next hole, so I might have to skip a few stitches actually. I pull it up until about this much is left, and I'm not going to tie any knot yet. I'm going to go down through the next hole and then tie a knot. I'm probably going to end up sewing instead of at the edge, just one row in because my cardboard is a little bit smaller than my soil. And that's what it looks like here. And I'm going to flip it over and now I'm going to tie my knot to secure the cardboard and the soil together. So just continue going up through the next hole that you have. 
up through wherever it's naturally coming up through on your soil, pulling it tight, then finding where the next one is, and going through. And I'm just making sure when I'm doing this that when I'm going up and down through, I'm going one row in, so on the line that's here. Because it might naturally want to come up over here, but I'm just going to reshape it. Because if I flip my thing over, there's about one row above on the edges. And I want to keep it consistent like that. So continue that, and I'll meet you guys when you're all the way back at your knot in the beginning. Alright, so this is what my soil looks like all sewn on. There's a lot of soil at the edge, which is good for sewing the soil together with the pot later. And then what we're gonna do is you can either like weave these in or you can just shove them underneath the cardboard, which is what I'm gonna do. There's the soil. And then for the pot, I'm not really gonna sew this down here. I'm just gonna kind of push down like it's one of those reusable grocery bags. Cause when you put your stuff in here, it'll just go on top of that. But you can do whatever you want. And then the last video, I took um, some fabric and lined the inside, which if you guys want to, you can do that. For this one, I'm not going to because <laughs> I don't want to cut up my bed sheet anymore. <laughs> so the next step that we're going to do to make our pot is put the soil in the top. And I'm going to do mine about three rows down of the single crochets. So just make sure when you're sewing your bag in that you are taking into account where your soil is going to have its bend. And then take a string of the of the pot color and make sure it's long enough to wrap all the way around the pot. So about your wingspan's length. And then thread your needle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I lay my soil about three rows down from the edge of the pot. And then start sewing it in. And you're actually only going to sew half of it. So I'm going to choose to sew the bigger half because my fold isn't exactly right in the center. So I'm going to sew all of this and then leave this unsewn. That way I can lift this part up. So I'm going to find where the bend begins and then insert my, my pot color yarn up through the soil. Okay, so to make this string of pearls, I'll link the video that I watched down below, but that was uh, probably a few months ago, and I don't really remember, so this is kind of the way that I'm doing it now. And I kind of changed it up a little bit in how many loops for each little pearl that's on the strand and the distance between them. Um, so you're going to want to leave about this much room, it's probably as long as your hand, and then tie the knot up here, and so just make a slip knot. And this is because we're going to want plenty of room to tie all of the string of pearls down into the soil. And if you make it too short, you might not be able to do that. All right, so after you have a long tail, go ahead and get the piece of yarn that's attached to your skein of yarn and hold that in your left hand and chain six. Did you hear me chewing in the... <laughs> 
Um, so now if you find the second chain from your hook, we're going to make a puff stitch into it and how we're going to do that is yarn over, then insert into that second chain from your hook. So here's the first chain and here's the second chain. And yarn over again and then you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert it back into that same loop, yarn over, pull through. Now you'll have five, yarn over, insert into that same loop. Yarn over, pull through. Now you'll have seven. Yarn over, insert here. Yarn over, pull through. And now you have nine. I like to do it with just nine loops for the first string of pearls. Then yarn over and pull through all of the loops. And then to kind of secure this, we're just gonna make a slip knot right into that same loop. So yarn over and the loop on your hook. And there's your first little pearl. Then I'm going to chain seven. And make another pearl, but this time I'm going to do it until we have 11 loops on the hook instead of nine. So yarn over, go into the second chain from your hook. Yarn over, go through. Yarn over, go back into the loop. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, go back into the loop. Yarn over, pull through. And do that a total of five times until you have 11 loops on your hook. And then yarn over and pull through all of these. Then make a slip stitch. Now I'm gonna chain eight. And repeat the last pearl which had 11 loops. And then yarn over and pull through all of the loops. Then make a slip stitch. So that is how I make my my pearls, and I'll explain it in a little bit more detail um, my specific things. <laughs> so here are all of the pearls that I've made. Um, so specifically, this one has a chain of six, and then a nine loop pearl, and then a chain of seven, and eleven loop pearl, and all of the rest are eleven loop pearls. 888999 and in total this has eight pearls and as you can see I tried my best to weave them in but kind of failed so just try your best uh, to weave in the end at the not the long side at the other side <laughs> try your best to weave in the ends at the very end and keep your long tails for attaching it to the pot and then I made three of I made three string of pearls with the dark green color that have eight pearls on them and three with the light green and then I made three with the dark green and light green that had nine and then I made three of each that had ten pearls so they have varying lengths but you guys can play around with your lengths and the distance between your pearls and how many loops and all of that until you have a string that you like. Alright so to attach your string of pearls um, plant into the pot you're just going to make sure that you stab a nice hole through the top of your soil through the underside of the cardboard so that your needle can go nice and through I just did this by really pressing hard into here and holding the cardboard here and then I made a nice hole then you want to gather all of the string of pearls that you should have all the ends woven in at the bottom and have all of the ends up here at the top and make a nice knot but first we're gonna make a knot first we're gonna thread all of them through the hole at the top and then tie a knot on the other side so that they don't come out so I'm gonna do this in little batches so I'm gonna kind of divide it up into three groups and then thread them all through the needle in their separate groups so this can go through my needle so I wove um, all the threads in through this needle here and I'm going to put my needle through the top and through the hole that I made and then pull it through. It helps to hold on the top of the leaves here and then pull these down through. Then you can check the top here and make sure that you pull all of the strands all the way through. What? <laughs> I've done this whole entire time, every single time one square is touching another square, they're both going alternating directions, but between this front panel and this part of the back panel, it's not doing that. But it's doing it everywhere else. 
All right, so then you're just gonna tie a knot at the bottom with the strands. And try to press it all the way up to the cardboard. And then we're gonna need to have room for two more groups of these with our other pearls over here. And just repeat that process of shoving them in through the hole at the top and tying a knot at the bottom when you feel like it's ready. And then I'll meet you guys back for the strap. All right, so this is what my string of pearls all look like now that I've attached them. And on the inside, it looks like this. So I tied all of the knots together. I had two on both sides and then I tied them both together. And then I pulled individually on all of these strings really tight so that it will not undo. Um, and so yeah, I feel confident with that secured there and you cannot see anything from the outside. Then I placed these stitch markers and I count, I just placed one randomly in one of the stitches on the top and then I counted, so that's the first stitch and then I count, no, yeah. I placed one single crochet into a random single crochet and then from there I counted 20 to place the next stitch in the 20th stitch, counted 20 again to place this with the next stitch, and counted 20 again to get back to the beginning. So there's in total four safety pins placed 20 stitches evenly apart from each other. This is going to be to attach the straps, which we're going to make four. If you did a different number of increases and decreases, then you're going to want to take your total number of stitches all the way around and divide it by four to see how far apart to place your safety pins. But I had 80 stitches in total around the top, so divide that by four and you get 20. Now to make the straps, what you're going to do is you're going to cut three pieces of string that are as long as your wingspan out of the color of your pot, and then you're going to tie them into a knot. And leave enough room so that you can tie, um, you can attach that strap to the bag. So about the length of your finger or so. Then I'm, the way I do is I'm just going to braid this whole strip and I just put this end into my teeth or my lips and then I work from there braiding down in front of me and that's how I do it but you can also tape it to your table and braid it as you go. <laughs> Alright, so I literally just put this right here and I braid. And make sure every few times you like pull one of the strings out so they don't get all tangled at the bottom. And you can also readjust where you put your teeth as um, you move further down. So continue your braid until you get about this much left and then go ahead and make a knot right about here. Um, so you just have enough room to again attach it to the pot. Do this a total of four times and I'll meet you guys back to attach them to the pot. Alright, so here are all of my straps um, and then divide them into two groups of two and thread the needle onto the first group of two, all of the threads. Alright, so now after you have them all threaded through your hook, you're going to go right into the spot with the safety pin like so and pull them through and then also you can take that safety pin out then once they're all pulled through just make a just make a bigger knot around these initial knots and pull it tight so now that will not come back through the stitch and then of course weave in the ends through these stitches around here. And then you're going to take both strands of the strap, make sure that they're nice and pretty. And as you can see one is longer than the other so when we tie the knot on the other side we'll just make sure it goes over both of these. And what we're going to do is we're going to attach it to the opposite safety pin so we're going to skip that one and go into the one on the other half of the pot. They should be on the opposite sides of the 
pot and then your other strap will go through these two and they'll connect at the top. So repeat the same process for attaching on this side, going through the safety pin and weaving in the ends. And then with the other group of two, you're going to attach one side over here, make it nice and pretty, and attach the other side to the opposite side in the other direction. And I'll meet you guys back. Thank you all for watching this hanging plant purse tutorial. I'm really excited to see how your hanging plant purses turned out. So please DM me a picture on Instagram. I'd be super happy to see it. And comment down below what other tutorials you want to see or what other types of videos you want to see. If you want to see anything with my college life or whatever, just let me know what, what videos you guys want to see. I'm open to ideas and I'm trying to get one out every weekend. So it would be helpful hearing what you guys want to watch.